The Finance Committee meets this morning to discuss the Byzantine intricate tax schemes of some of the largest U.S. pharmaceutical companies and the immense handouts that these companies got from the 2017 Republican tax law. In short, it goes like this. When most Americans travel to some faraway land, they get a suntan. When big pharma's profits travel overseas, they get a really big tax break. The tax break got a whole lot bigger as a result of those 2017 Republican reforms. Two years ago, the Finance Committee Democratic staff began investigating these issues. We asked five big pharma companies for answers to questions that really are pretty straightforward. They're not complicated. Where do you make your sales? Where do you report your profits? Where do you stick your intellectual property? The reality is, these are not nuclear secrets. But Big Pharma pulled out all the stops to keep the details of their tax schemes <clears throat> hidden in the shadows. Nonetheless, the committee is updating the public on our ongoing investigation today. Here is what Big Pharma doesn't want the American people to know about. Our investigation obtained data from the Joint Committee on Taxation, and of course they're the nonpartisan experts, on the effective tax rates the largest pharmaceutical companies paid before and after the Republican tax law went into effect. The numbers are eye-popping. Republicans delivered Big Pharma a tax cut of more than 40%. From 2014 to 2016, the industry paid 19.6% on average. In 2019 and 2020, it paid 11.6%. Pharma got a substantially lower tax rate than most industries, specifically because the 2017 Republican tax bill essentially green-lighted the kind of tax gaming that the biggest drug companies pursue day in and day out. They stash their intellectual property in other countries. They stick manufacturing offshore. They use accounting tricks to shift money to foreign subsidiaries. Republicans in that tax bill could have put a stop to these tax games. They didn't. Here's what makes this so appalling for taxpayers and all of the patients who are waiting in line for affordable medicine. The U.S. is by far the biggest market for these drug companies. For some companies, this is where they do the vast majority of their sales. For Amgen, it's 74 percent. For AbbVie, it's 72 percent. These are American companies selling to American patients who we have the honor to represent here in the Senate. But their profits show up somewhere else. Amgen reported 60% of its profits offshore in 2019. AbbVie reported 100% of its profits offshore. Colleagues, think about that number, 100%. In many cases, these companies charge American patients and taxpayers staggering amounts for prescription medicine, sometimes double, triple, quadruple what they charge in other countries and then report the profits on these huge U.S. sales somewhere else. For example, the list price for Keytruda, a cancer drug produced by Merck, is $175,000 per year. Merck sold more than $37 billion of the drug in the U.S. between 2019 and 2022. According to the committee's investigation, Merck reported virtually all of the profits on the sales overseas the level of profit shifting industry-wide is enough to leave you slack-jawed. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, colleagues, this is not made up by some group that has partisan views. According to the Joint Committee on Taxation, Big Pharma reports 75% of their income offshore. The update to our ongoing investigation, which the Finance Committee made available this morning, goes deeper into specific cases 
of big pharma's tax gains. That information is available to uh, the American people to read on our website right now. Without objection, I'll enter a copy of our record and the accompanying JCT analysis into the record. Now, I'll close by saying there's a big interest on our side of the aisle in fixing this broken system, cracking down on tax gaming and ensuring that these big corporations pay a fair share. In 2021, Senator Brown, Senator Warner, and I introduced a comprehensive proposal that addresses all of the issues that the committee is going to discuss today. We spent a lot of time on putting together the Brown, Warner, Whiten proposal to deal with the kinds of questions we're talking about. Senator Whitehouse has been a leader on this topic. Obviously, Treasury Secretary Yellen has led a major effort to crack down on tax schemes all over the world. So obviously, the Finance Committee has got a lot to discuss today. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses. <coughs> Let me recognize uh, our friend, Senator Craig.